Hello and welcome to Matcha Mornings, part of the Wander Barn Podcast Network. I'm your host, Amanda Kingsmith, and I'm excited to dive deep on topics around holistic health, the power of food, hormone health, how the practices of yoga can impact our health and well-being, and much more. So grab your cup of tea, settle in, and let's get started. Hello and welcome back for another episode of Matcha Mornings. I am so excited that you've decided to join me for today's episode of the podcast. And today on the podcast, I am very excited to be joined by Lindsay Williams. Lindsay is a yoga teacher. She is a fitness instructor. She's an osteopath student, and she also has a background in nutrition. And this week on the podcast, we are talking about immune systems. This is such an important conversation to have during the current state of the world with the global pandemic, with coronavirus, and the fact that so many of us are working extra hard to make sure that we don't get sick right now. And there's a lot of ways that you can take care of your immune system. And Lindsay and I talk about a couple of those on this episode of the show. So I hope that you enjoy this episode with Lindsay. And without further ado, here she is. Welcome to the podcast today, Lindsay. I'm really excited to have you here with me. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to chat with you. Yeah, I'm excited to chat with you too. We've had so many good chats about health and wellness off the podcast. So it's really awesome to have you here. And first question for you is, can you just tell listeners a little bit about yourself, where you're based, what you do and all that good stuff? For sure. Um, So I live in Canmar, Alberta with my husband and two kids. Um, And yeah, we've been in in Canmar for well about two decades. Um, So we went to Canmore, my husband and I originally sort of to live that outdoor lifestyle because that's sort of one aspect that that's kind of been foundational in kind of that healthy, active living approach to living lifestyle. And previous to that, I was in Victoria and, and Fernie and in Victoria I did my degree in kinesiology. So I have that sort of movement background. And then um Since then, I've kind of delved into nutrition and that sort of thing. So yeah, now I'm at a stage in my life where I'm weaving it all together. I'm currently doing uh, my degree in osteopathy. Um, And so yeah, kind of into the movement, wellness, holistic nutrition, functional well-being kind of side of things. So yeah. Amazing. I love everything you have going on. And I'm so excited to chat more about that. And I would love to hear your like journey with health and wellness. Like when did you first get introduced to health and wellness and what what kind of got you introduced into the lifestyle that you have now? Yeah. Um so I probably it's not uncommon. I um grew up with a little bit of an eating disorder and um sort of that negative relationship or or I don't know, um, (laughs) an unhealthy relationship with, with food through my adolescence. I was very into swimming growing up and, um, so very active and, uh, continued that into my university years and, and beyond. Um, so activity's always been, um, a big part of my life. And while I sort of had the eating disorder kind of stuff, it felt like more of a controlled um, a controlling mechanism. Um, but then, you know, as I've kind of aged and, and delved through different times in my life, it's an empowering way to be the, the active lifestyle. And then nutrition, um, has become a way to, I've I've really looked at it as, as a way to fuel my body, um, not something to withhold or, or even control again, but to, um, honor all the things that I do in my life and, and to find whole healthy foods that can fuel those passions. Yeah. I love that mindset looking at food. It's uh, and I think that, you know, what you're talking about, I think is common for a lot of teenage girls. I know I struggled with that as well when I was a teenager and into my early twenties. And it's just interesting how you can shift the mindset from thinking about food as something that might make you look a certain way in kind of this like negative sense to thinking about Mm -hmm. food as this thing that fuels all the things that you do. And that's really how I've shifted my mindset with food too. It's like the food that I eat keeps me 
doing the things I love to do. It means that I can go on hikes and go on bike rides and go for walks and, you know, work out and, and practice yoga. All the stuff that I love to do happens because I feel my body properly. And it's such a shift in mindset when you go through that, going from like, oh, I shouldn't eat this because I might look a certain way to, okay, I'm going to eat eat this different thing and make this choice because it's going to help me with the lifestyle that I, that I have. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, yeah, it's just that mind shift around, um, food as fuel, but also even all the things that you're talking about, like the, the activities, like looking at those, uh, as fuel as well. Um, and, and it just becomes this like energy exchange with, um, you know, the, the fruits, vegetables, plants, animals, whatever we choose to eat and the, and then this energy exchange with the environment that we're around. So that fuels us. And then we're off doing different things, participating in our environment. So I just feel like it's, um, yeah, I, I feel like I've kind of evolved it into being a part of like the ecosystem as opposed to this, you know, less of a connection and more of, like I was saying earlier, the, the thing to control. And the other thing that, that was really sort of foundational in that shift actually didn't even happen until almost 10 years ago when I had my daughter I thought I thought really needed to I needed to get clear on on this relationship so I don't um I don't be I'm not responsible for for perpetuating this onto another generation so yeah it's definitely much more healthy and 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 empowering way to to approach food and and the activities that we do Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's really beautiful. Like, you know, looking not only for yourself, but also for your daughter, because I think that for so many women, it's like we turn to the female figures in our lives. And, you know, it's no fault to, you know, our mothers or our grandmothers or our aunts, if, if they have those struggles. But I think that, you know, for us, especially stepping into motherhood, being able to look at like, okay, how can I make sure that the things that I'm struggling with don't get projected onto my daughter is a really amazing thing. So I think that that's really mm-hmm. awesome that you were able to do that. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's def- and, and, you know, like I watch her grow, she's almost 10 and, and seeing her relationship is, you know, with food and with, with the planet actually is what I, what I love. And so that, that full circle connection, I think is, is a neat one to witness um, evolving in my daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things that we're going to dive into today is talking about immune systems. And, you know, this is Mm -hmm. a particularly relevant topic right now, since we're in this, this global crisis with the COVID-19 going around. And it's just a really crazy time to be alive in a lot of different ways. But I think speaking for myself, like there's definitely been I've definitely been much more conscious on things that I can do to make sure I'm keeping my body healthy. So looking at my sleep, my food, my nutrition, my vitamins, all that sort of stuff. And so I'm excited to dive into that. And I'd love to hear, you know, just kind of, you know, your thoughts and and stuff around immune system and then some ways that we can start to boost our immune system naturally. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to chat about that. Yeah. Awesome. And so what, I guess to start with, kind of how do you, I guess, like approach immunity? Like, do you kind of have like a a philosophy on it or a a way that you kind of look at the different elements of the immune system, especially when it comes to like your own and then also your kids? Yeah. Okay. So I, it's a a great question to ask right now too, because I, you know, I'm even like pondering it a little bit more myself, as you said, during, during these times. But um, I think one thing I've always known, but in, and more so now that I'm studying osteopathy is, is our innate capacity, um, to, to achieve fun, a healthy, a healthy state. Like our, that's our body's natural, um, tendency. And we living our day-to-day lives, whether it's through alignment or, or through the things that we put in our body or the toxicities that we're exposed to kind of throw that innate balance off. So when I'm talking about immune system, I really am thinking about that. How do we, how do we support our body to do what it's designed to do? Our innate capacity to, um, to heal ourselves. And, um, and, and I mean that in a way that your body is, is, has the tools necessary to be healthy and functional and it's the things that we 
um, do on a day-to-day basis that might throw us out of alignment or the toxicities that we're exposed to or the things that we put in our body or on our skin or um, whatever that is um, that throw us out of our natural innate capacity to to be in this homeostatic place where um, where we can fight disease we can um, you know or we're, we're better capable of, of fighting disease or, or that sort of thing so yeah I I feel like I'm looking at that immune system is how best can I support myself to to so that my body can do what it's designed to do and so that's that's kind of what I um, I feel like I'm evolving into in terms of that that immune system and, and how to yeah that makes sense yeah, absolutely. That makes a ton of sense. And I, I really love that way of looking at it. I think that one of the things that I've really discovered through my own health and wellness journey is just how interconnected everything is. So I used to think like, oh, I have a stomach ache. So my stomach is aching because I ate something. And you know, now I'm realizing like, okay, it's a huge stress center. So maybe it's not about the food that I ate. It's about you know, where my mental state is at or the movement that I did or didn't do that day or how well I slept or how much water I had. Like there can be so many things that relate to this like stomach ache that I've, you know, previously only attributed to to food. And so I think immunity is very similar as well. Like I think I used to think of immunity as like, okay, have I taken vitamin C or am I getting enough mm-hmm. vitamins? And there's so many totally. other things that that weave into it to create that that balance or that homeostasis. And so I'd love to hear like some of the things that you've been kind of doing and some of your practices for immunity. Yeah, for sure. So I guess one thing that, that, um, admittedly is a a newer practice, um, for me right now. And I'm, um, playing my, my daughter's more into it than my son, but, um, they're, they both kind of find it a little, little bit fun challenge too, but, um, is doing cold water immersions. And so um, that idea of, of exposing myself to whether it's cold, just like finishing my shower with like a minute or two of that icy cold shower or, um, or going for a jump in, in the river, or the lake um, in, you know, right now in, in Canada, it's, it's quite chilly. So, um, so that gives quite the jolt, but to really kind of encourage that um, a natural, immune response. So, so the theory behind that is you're, you're inducing a stress, um, to your body and then your, your natural, um, immune defenses kind of get boosted up to manage that stress and, and then bring it back down to that homeostatic place. And so, um, that's one thing that, that I've found, um, really invigorating, not only for, I feel, um, stronger, um, physiologically, I don't know if that, that makes sense, but like, I feel like my body is, is better able to handle, um, stresses and, but then mentally, even it's, it's a neat and empowering, um, kind of activity to do that. Yeah. I I feel mentally stronger after, after these cold water immersions, which is just kind of a, a neat thing. Um, And I'm sure like we could probably even have a whole other conversation on the, you know, those mental connections. But um, so that's one thing that I've been playing with a lot. And then really right now, the big thing is this, this stress on the, the nervous system is, is a big one because we've kind of had like this whole shift in our lifestyles. Um, And, you know, for many, there's financial stresses associated with it. For lots of families, there's, you know, the scheduling changes and added roles of maybe homeschooling or just having your kids at home and you're trying to balance work. So that kind of over adrenalized state um, is, is really common. And, and for me in particular, I find I've been weaving in more of an intentional breath practice and, and meditation. And, um, I have my kids on board with that meditation, um, practice as well. And, and so it's amazing even, um, we, we've been meditating as a family, um, the last few weeks, um, and, and just how that kind of grounds us all are together and you can feel the whole space kind of kind of just drop and down regulate and and that as well feels um very supportive for for the nervous system and and therefore the 
um, the immune system. Um, and then things that are a little bit more um, all the time in my schedule that that I'm maybe more intentional about are, are things like the hydration and and even um, doing a little bit of neti pot a little bit more regularly and the the dry skin brushing a little bit more regularly to pro, to kind of um, promote the lymphatic kind of drainage and and neti pot to moisturize the um, mucous membranes and in, in the nasal cavity and that sort of thing. So those those things are just um, more that frontline defense um, support and, and the hydration for that same reason. Um, and what I'm not successful at right now is sleep. Um, but that obviously is, is one of the biggest kind of things that we can do for, for supporting the, the nervous system. But, um, probably, um, the, the, everything's cyclical. And so you kind of have to also, um, be mindful that, you know, for right now, sleep right now, I'm not rocking at the sleep department, but, um, there'll be other times where I'll, I'll be able to sleep with a bit more ease and probably not rock at the, the hydration department. And, and sometimes, um, approaching that with a little bit of compassion too, that we don't have to be perfect at everything all the time, but that, um, you know, when we can optimize these things, the, the more, the better, but also if you're, if it's sliding off your scale of like consciousness of, okay. Um, you know, I forgot to hydrate all day one, you know, it's, it's about looking at the habit, but two, you know, maybe your, your body is just not asking for it as much. And and so, um, tuning into that listening as well, um, through these times is paying attention to, to what your body needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so much good stuff in there. And I love that you brought up, you know, not beating ourselves up for not being perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly, like, I think that that's relevant all the time because, I think I was actually thinking about how it's so interesting how as humans, it is so hard to break bad habits and it is so hard to create new habits. <laughs> it's like this really <laughs> weird thing where, you know, you, you're like, okay, I'm going to get up every morning and I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes. I mean, it takes ages before that something that you just do. Mm-hmm. Yet, you know, something like, I'll use like one of my my habits, for example, like snacking on like chips, for example. That's like, that's really easy for me. (laughs) You know, they taste good. They're cheap. It's like not hard for me to do that. It's a really hard habit to break. And it's so interesting Mm -hmm. how it takes these time to build these new habits and, and break these old habits. And I think that it's just remembering that like, you know, we're going through all these different cycles and phases, like you mentioned, and that sometimes some things are going to be easier than other things. And I think that, you know, particularly right now, like, you know, that the cold water is happening and the meditation is happening for you, but the sleep isn't so great. And, you know, that's okay. You're still doing something for your body. And it's just going to stress you out more if you're beating yourself up over not getting good (laughs) sleep versus like controlling what you can control, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, the, when those nights when if I'm lying awake a little bit longer or staying up doing things later than I should, yeah, just kind of recognizing the balance and, and, you know, if it's lying awake in bed, shift that into a breathing practice and, and not stress about, about being awake. And the other thing that you were just saying about the chips, like, I think that it's a, it's a funny thing because um, sometimes I think we um, can also look at these habits and be like, okay, I'm buying, buying the chips and this is this habit that I slid into, but then also giving yourself permission to, to kind of wonder why. And, and for sure, not always, there's going to be like, Oh, this is why my body needed it. Sometimes it's just a, a craving that, um, that, that, that's more of an emotional craving than anything, but, but maybe times when you're like the chips is like your body just being like, I need some salt. <laughs> and so you have like, it maybe this like mineral, um, electrolyte imbalance. And, and so your mind maybe just went to chips right away because you're like, oh my God, these chips would be so good. But then also looking at the deeper layers of those habits and and um, being curious about them and not just dismissing them because, uh, oh, you know, that's like my classic go-to, but also, you know, is there something there that my body was trying to communicate to me? And, and so not overanalyzing everything, but like being curious about things like that, I think is is also a neat practice. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I really love that as well. And that's definitely something that, yeah, I, I feel like there's a, there's like a chart or website or something where you can find like, if you're craving this, it's actually this, like, I think dark chocolates, like magnesium or something yeah, like that. Totally. And yeah, it is, there's, yeah. yeah, it's really interesting to look at that. I, I've definitely like paid attention to that. And yeah, I think too, like for me, I've particularly just, especially during this time, like, you know, chips, for example, are something that I ate as a kid. And I think that they make me feel safe. <laughs> and I think that that's part of the reason why, you know, it's the afternoon, maybe I get stressed out, maybe I see the news or something like that. And then I'm like, oh, I want to eat chips. And so mm -hmm. sometimes I'm like, okay, you know, it's fine if you have some chips, but then you also need to have like a green smoothie or some <laughs> green powder, or <laughs> maybe you could eat celery with that guacamole instead of chips. So just trying to like yeah. find that that balance because I feel like it's always about striking a balance, right? Like not beating ourselves up, especially when we're dealing with an extra stress or a crisis or something like that, but then also mm -hmm. looking at how we can support our bodies best. Hey everyone, we're taking a quick break from the podcast to talk about Muse. Muse tracks your brain during meditation to give you real-time feedback on your meditation, guiding you into the zone and solving the major problem that most of us have when starting a meditation practice. Muse lets you know when you're doing it right. Your Muse headband basically acts like your personal assistant. While you meditate, Muse measures whether your mind is calm or active and translates that data into sounds. When you're calm, you'll hear peaceful sounds. And when your mind wanders, the sounds will intensify, guiding you back to a calm state. So if you're like me, where you have a really solid meditation practice and you love to do it every day or every couple of days, but sometimes you just find that you really can't get in the rhythm because your mind is so busy, Muse might be for you. The best part about this is that I have a 15% discount off just for listeners of Matcha Mornings. So head on over to bit.ly forward slash Matcha Mornings Muse to get your discount. All right, back to the episode. Yeah, it's, it's to be honest, like all of it's just a practice in, in being like honest with ourselves and getting to know ourselves and how we tick and um, I mean, you've come to some of my yoga classes before and it's what I preach in movement, like get to know how you move when, when you're nourishing yourself, get to know what your habits are. So it's all just like this digging deeper into finding out what makes you tick, what makes you, what, how do you thrive? Um, and, and how does your body optimally function? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's so important to recognize that and recognize that like some things that work for some people don't necessarily work for, oh. for all people and all of us are yes. so different, right? Yeah. What makes things like popular in the craze is, is usually just like creating a shift and, and kind of that like moment where your body has to figure things out and then that will create some kind of shift. But, um, so it's not necessarily the, the, you know, the one particular, um, way of eating or one particular way of moving is better than the other. It's just that people are making a transition. And so therefore, they're seeing a success. And so, you know, being mindful of, of, like I said, what makes you tick and, and what about change is make is working for you and what won't work for you and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I really love that. And I think too, we all deal with stress a little bit differently. So like mm -hmm. understanding kind of our stress responses and just paying attention, like you said, I think is so important. Like for me, uh, on top of eating chips, like a stress response, like I know I'm stressed kind of unconsciously when I just like dive into TV. Like that'll be the <laughs> yeah. thing that I want to spend like my spare time doing. It's like, I don't feel like reading. I don't feel like exercising. I just want to watch TV. And that's when I know that I'm like, okay, go out, go for a walk. If you still want to watch TV after you can. But that's like kind of where my mind feels like, okay, we're overwhelmed. Like, let's just dive into mm -hmm. something where you don't have to think. And I think that that's really common for a lot of people. And I've particularly noticed it over the last couple of weeks and just found like more than ever, I need those like good habits to kind of balance out this like desire to also just like veg out in front of the TV. Totally. I think that that's, you know, that's a really important um, thing that you bring up is, is this, you know, we do have to kind of hold ourselves to, to some level of accountability too. like, it is, it's easy to feel the overwhelm and it's easy to say, 
you know, um, I need to just stop and, and have a moment of rest. And for sure, we do need to do that. But then we also, it's important to move your body every day. And that doesn't mean you have to like crank out this like huge sweat or do like a crazy workout or, um, you know, like a full primary series ash tang or anything that like is like really high adrenalized, but, um, but yeah, like moving your body, your body's designed to move. So, so giving yourself that, that bit of, of responsibility, not in this, um, shooting on yourself kind of way, but in a way of, I know that if I just carve out 10 minutes to move or 10 minutes to breathe or take 10 minutes before I, you know, go to find the next thing in the fridge and contemplate what would be the best for me. So just that pause and, and create the space for these, these habits. Um, you know, sometimes it's just starting to move that, that will, that'll get you moving. And sometimes it's just starting to slow down that will get your, you know, your adrenal system to slow down. So like that meditative practice or the pause before you grab that next snack. Um, so, so being intentional, um, and not kind of, um, passive in your choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And then on kind of like the food and nutrient side of things, like Mm -hmm. I know that I think that this is probably something you do like regularly to support your immune system and your family's immune system. But there, is there any particular sort of recommendations or things that you've been doing just to keep immune kind of immune systems naturally boosted through our nutrition? Yeah, for sure. So, um, it's, I, I definitely, um, I'm a big proponent of, of food is thy medicine. And so I think absolutely we, we can do things with our nutrition to, to help us be stronger through these times. And, um, for us, we make sure that we have some healthy greens every day in our body. So whether that's a salad at dinner, um, you know, some extra veggies at lunch, um, you know, sometimes it even is just a, a greens powder, um, you know, because it is hard, a little bit harder for to, to kind of keep on top of the produce, you know, and, and, and also socially distance from the grocery stores. So, um, so sometimes you kind of have to um, wiggle in those green sources, but, but making sure you get those, those healthy greens into your body is a big deal for kind of maintaining that the appropriate like alkaline balance in your body um, and, and fiber and, and that sort of thing. So that's a, a big one that, that we try to be mindful of um, in our, in our day to day and weekly planning. And then um, just regulating, you know, my kids when they're in and around the house, they tend to want like those carb kind of things a little bit more, not to vilify one sort of macronutrient, but, but for sure, um, you know, where our activity level is a little bit less, um, you know, and that we're not out and about as much. And so, so monitoring that particular macronutrient in our diet and just making sure that it's not out of balance, um, for all of us. So that's, that's another thing that we're doing right now is, is, is a little bit more focus on, on protein, um, and healthy fats in our meals. Um, and then personally, what I'm doing is, is, um, I, I tend to weave in an intermittent fasting protocol into, into my day to day. Um, and, and so I think that, um, this helps that control of inflammation. Of course, if we have inflammation, then our bodies are, are the natural physiology and our, our body's not able to kind of function optimally. So, um, that's, that's more of a personal kind of thing. Obviously I don't, don't do that with my children. Um, but, but that's something that, um, that I think is, is really supportive, um, something easily done right now. And so I think those are the, the top three things nutritionally, um, that, that I would recommend to, to people if they were asking me. And yeah, I think that, that, that hits the top three anyways. Yeah, no, those are, those are great recommendations. And yeah, I mean, intermittent fasting is great for, you know, keeping that inflammation down and then, you know, helping with blood sugar as well, which I think it's kind of interesting how when we're like at home and I think people know this in general, or I know this in general, but you know, carbs can be so, they kind of like mess with our brain in a way where we just want more Mm -hmm. and more of them. And there's something about like, you can't leave the house. (laughs) We're not supposed to be leaving the house and we're kind of stressed out. And 
you know, baking makes a lot of people feel really good when they're stressed and baking tastes really good. And it feels very comforting. Like there's something that's very comforting about a warm piece of bread or a, you know, banana bread or something like that. It feels hearty. It feels like it just makes you feel like you've got like a like somebody's hugging you a little bit. And so, <laughs> totally. you know, obviously I love all those things. And I think that, like I said before, you know, just I'm trying to pay attention to why do I want this? Is it because I feel like I need to be kind of like made feel secure or because it's like a, a childhood thing that's coming up for me? Or is it because I feel emotional? And all of that is fine. Like it's totally normal, mm-hmm. but it kind of hit a point where it's like, you know, I don't need to eat a whole loaf of banana bread or a whole bag of chips every single day because that's not going to make me feel good, right? Like that's going to put my body in a state of stress and compromise my immune system. And ultimately, I'm just not going to feel good in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like, of course, do the baking things. And I mean, right now, my kids are definitely more into baking than they've, they've ever been. we do these, you know, sometimes we've done some family baking challenges or, or to kind of, bring a little bit more structure to their day. We'll, you know, schedule in a baking time, but, um, and for sure, enjoy the, the, um, the fruits of your labors, but don't overindulge on them. And that's, that goes for, for now and for always, you know, like, of course, have, have the treats that, you know, and, and have those, those fun times with your, your family or your, your partner or, or just by yourself. If that's what, what, what you enjoy doing. Um, but, but, yeah, balance and, and, and looking at, okay, what, what, what part of it, what this was, what was feeding me? Was it the act of baking something? Is it the product at the end? Is it eating all the product at the end? Very rarely is it the, the totally gorging on the product at the end. Um, but sometimes we kind of let ourselves go and, and, um, and whatever you do it once and then you realize, and then you come back, you know, and, and those are, those are those times where we have to have a bit of self-compassion as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And something else I'm curious about is with vitamins. Do you do like any vitamins mm-hmm. or supplementing or that sort of thing on top of kind of all the other stuff we've talked about? I don't um, have a regular vitamin routine, um, and that's it's that's one of those things I've always like. Oh, I'm a holistic nutritionist. Should I should I be taking multivitamin? And you know, I I think there's times where I'm like, I really feel like I need to be taking a multivitamin and, and likely that's my body missing some nutrients, um, and vitamins in, in my diet. And then there's, you know, then I kind of just forget about it. And I think those are, you know, whether I've been topped up or whether I'm like accessing the vitamins from other sources, I'm, I guess more of an advocate of, of, trying to have like a very diet and making sure that you're getting things in what you're eating rather than, than the supplementing, you know, I always like to recommend to people if you like having, you know, kombucha or, or even yogurt, you know, then, then do you need to be having the probiotic? You know, I don't, I don't know. And so I think I'm more of an advocate of like a varied, um, diet over supplements. And, and I don't know if that's as a result of, of, because I innately have a very diet that, that, and I find supplements a hard habit. I don't know which, you know, if I'm putting too much of my experience in, but I, I would definitely, you know, encourage people to, if supplementing feels challenging to, to look at your, your, what you're buying and what you're putting into your mouth in terms of your food, um, and and then of course then you can save the extra expense of of the supplementing if that's also a concern at this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point because supplements are, especially good supplements, are really you know not cheap. I think when I was in university, I used to spend, and even in my my I guess like early to mid twenties, I spent a lot of money on supplements and vitamins. And I think I was firmly in the mindset of like, you know, if I'm not eating super well all the time, which at that point I wasn't, like at least I'm getting some of these nutrients through vitamins. And absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I've sort of shifted my mentality now. I mean, I travel a lot normally when there's not a global pandemic. (laughs) Definitely grounded right now. Um, but (laughs) normally travel quite a bit. And so I just found like 
the last time I was on a big backpacking trip and when I was taking a lot of supplements, like half my bag was full of this stuff. I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, this isn't super doable and super sustainable. And now I've looked a lot more at like, okay, are there ways that I can like eat my vitamin C and, you know, Mm -hmm. eat my vitamin A and get these other things and that, and that sort of stuff right now during this, um, my husband and I have both been taking more vitamin C, vitamin D and lysine. And the vitamin D has mostly just been because we transitioned between Panama and Canada. And although Canada is starting to warm up, it's still, we're getting a lot less sun than we were before. Um, Mm -hmm. But when we're away, that's not normally something we take. And it's felt pretty easy to do those vitamins like during this time. But yeah, I can see myself like (laughs) shifting off of that once I feel, you know, just a little bit more comfortable with the the virus situation. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, and, and, you know, likewise, like at the, the whole start of this, you know, I made sure we were stocked up on vitamin C and zinc and had our same thing, vitamin D on hand, because of course, we're, you know, not spending as much time outside. And, um, and so I, I definitely had a lot of those things a little bit more um, handy. And we were religiously taking them for the first, you know, 10 days. Um, but that's definitely fallen off, um, whether that's like psychologically, or we kind of like chopped ourselves up, um, and our body didn't really need them anymore, you know, who who knows which, which is to say which, but yeah, and and the other thing that I, like I mentioned earlier, the the supplement that I tend to kind of have on hand is is like a greens powder. um, And I think that one's kind of a nice one um, to just look at that for the the nutrient balance kind of side of things. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree with that. I think also too, like you bring up uh, a good point around like, you know, maybe your body's like kind of telling you that they, that it doesn't need it. And I think that tuning into our bodies is like, honestly, one of the best things that we can do is kind of listening to like, trying to tune into those cravings and understanding what type of nourishment you might need. And, you know, listening to your body in other ways too, like, am I tired? Do I need a break from the computer? Do I need to go for a walk? You know, what is it that I need all the time, but particularly during a stressful time? And I think that our body gives us these little signs if we just start to listen. Exactly. It totally does. It's there's like, like I said earlier in movement and in, in how we fuel ourselves, there's, there's definitely signs. And sometimes like we've, we've kind of gotten so, you know, cluttered with like shoulds and mixed messages that it's really hard to dig down to the like listening to the that truest layer of of what does my body need there it's yeah any aspect of the you know does it need rest does it need movement does it need this type of food but that that learning how to to dig beneath the clutter of what your mind will tell you and what your body is trying to communicate yeah absolutely i love that Amazing. This conversation has been so awesome and we've covered so much good stuff. Is there anything else you wanted to share today around immunity or health and wellness and particularly during this this wild time that we're living in? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's just, you know, like it, it, it's just that message to to be kind to yourself, but also that you are capable of of navigating through this. You have within you an innate capacity and and really see if you can tap into that inner strength in, in an empowering kind of way. And, and not like you need to come out of this like a superhero, but you have tools. And, and if you're confused by those tools or how to access those tools, there's so many resources and people out there um, like myself with, with, you know, the, the wellness industry background that, that are available to you. And so, you know, reach out to, to the nutritionist, to the, the movement specialists and with those questions, because we're definitely still here to support um, everyone through these times. And so feel empowered, like get to like, you got this. And, and if you don't got this, then someone's here to help you get this. And, and, and it's okay. We're like in this together. Yeah. Amazing. I love that. I feel like that's a perfect way to wrap up. And Lindsay, if people want to follow along with you or learn more about you, where can they go to find that? So I have my Instagram handle at functional nature 
and um, just developing my my functional nature.ca website um, where you can connect with some live zoom classes that I have to offer on there and, and gradually building that into sort of an online portal membership kind of space where we'll have a little bit more um, nutrition content and movement content and, and yoga content. So um, those are the best spots. And and on functionalnature.ca, there's a sign up for newsletters. And um, so just kind of building that new resource. Um, and my current website that that I'm um, that I have is is fuelawesome.com. Um, and so that kind of has some of the kind of current information as well. But but um, moving forward, functionalnature.ca is where you can find me. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time today and for this awesome conversation. This has been such a great conversation and such a great resource for everyone. Yes. Thanks for having me. It was a a pleasure to chat. All right, friends. I hope that you enjoyed that episode of Matcha Mornings with Lindsay Williams. You can find the show notes with notes and links from what we talked about in today's episode of the show over on wanderbarn.com forward slash Lindsay. It's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. And before we end this episode of the show, I just wanted to share about a couple other awesome episodes that are happening on some of the other podcasts that are a part of the Wander Barn Podcast Network. So over on The World Wanders, my husband and I, I have been interviewing people that we are friends with and that are in our community around the world who are currently stuck in countries that are not their home countries. So part one of our episode went out last week. We talked to a friend in Panama as well as a friend in Argentina. Part two is coming out this week and we're going to be chatting with some more friends who are experiencing the craziness of the quarantine from a traveler's perspective. And then over on Mastering the Business of Yoga, which I also host, and you guys have hopefully heard an episode of already, I've been talking a lot about online yoga business. So this week's episode of the podcast was with Barry Rissman, and she is amazing. She's a yoga teacher, a studio, a former studio owner and author, and we're talking all about how she's been able to build this successful online community. So if you are a a yogi or a yoga teacher or somebody who's been looking to expand your yoga business, I would definitely recommend checking that out. And you can find the feeds for those on wanderbarn.com or on their own websites at theworldwanders.com or mbomyoga.com or on any of your podcast apps. All right, that's all for now. I'll see you soon. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Matcha Mornings. To find links mentioned in this episode, show notes, photos, and more, head on over to wanderbarn.com forward slash podcast slash matcha dash mornings. To be the first to know about brand new episodes of Matcha Mornings, subscribe on your podcast app. If you enjoyed this episode of the show, please leave a review or send me an email at wanderbarn at gmail.com with the subject line Matcha Mornings. To follow along with me, Amanda Kingsmith, you can find me on Instagram at Amanda Kingsmith to learn more about other fun projects I'm working on. To find more great podcasts like this one on topics such as travel, the business of yoga, cryptocurrency, and more, head on over to wanderbarn.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you soon.